early calculating devices. Early calculating devices. Following are some of the early calculating devices. Stones, sticks and fingers. Early men used sticks and stones to count. Even today we use fingers to count at times. But using fingers, it is difficult to count more than the number of fingers. A man has only 10 fingers and 10 toes. It seems that this limitation of counting with fingers made him devise more effective counting devices. Hots, which device would you prefer to use for calculations? Abacus. This was the first counting device developed in 3500 BC. Abacus consisted of beads which could slide over wires. Each wire represented a column. The rightmost column represented the unit's place. By moving appropriate beads, one could do addition and subtraction to represent various numbers. Napier Bones In 1617, John Napier invented Napier Bones and later a slide rule which could be used for multiplication and division as well as addition and subtraction. But neither of these devices could be programmed. Pascaline Recognizing the limitation of Napier Bones, Blaise Pascal developed the Pascaline in 1642. This was a mechanical calculator capable of performing addition and subtraction. It used wheels and gears for number representation and calculations. This machine made frequent mistakes. Jackward's Loom In 1801, J. M. Jackward invented the powered loom. The key idea behind Jackward's loom was to control the action of the weaving process using punched cards. Each card contained the same number of rows and columns. Holes punched in a card controlled the movement of the wrap strings. The cards also described the patterns and the looms cycled through the cards. This machine could encode the knowledge of the master weaver producing automated weaving. Babbage's Engine In 1830, an English mathematician, Charles Babbage, proposed a steam-driven calculating machine the size of a room. He called it the Different Engine. It could compute tables of numbers like logarithms and navigation tables. He was the first to conceptualize and design a fully programmable mechanical computer. Later, he developed another machine that he called the analytical engine. Hollerith's Sensors Machine In 1889, an American named Herman Hollerith invented a counting machine to count the population of USA. It was based on punched cards, tiny wires detached, the presence or absence of holes in the card. He was the founder of the company that later became IBM. Major developments took place in the 20th and the early 21st centuries. Let's see the history of computers since the mid of the 20th century. Modern Computer Devices The first digital electronic computer, ABC. The first computer, prototype, to use vacuum tubes instead of mechanical switches was built by John V. Atanasoff and Clifford E. Berry. It was called Atanasoff Berry Computer, ABC. It used the binary number system like a modern computer. Howard Mark I It was the first fully automated electronic computer more reliable than early machines. It was developed by Howard H. Aiken. It marks the beginning of the era of the modern computer and the real dawn of the computer age. ENIAC and UNIVAC 
ENIAC or Electronic Numerical Integrator is the first electronic general-purpose digital computer. It was invented by John Presper Eckert and John Marshalley at the University of Pennsylvania. It could be programmed to solve different computing problems. Marshley and Eckert later developed the UNIVAC-1, Universal Automatic Computer. It was the first commercial electronic computer developed in 1951. It could work with numeric as well as with text data. Wow! It's so big! Some more. The construction of ENIAC began in 1943 and lasted until 1946. Generations of Computers The development of electronic computer took place in five distinct phases known as generations of computers. With each generation, computers got better, smaller, cheaper and more powerful than those of the previous generations. Decrease in, increase in, size. With each generation, the size of computers became smaller. Speed, the computing speed increased with each generation. Cost, computers became cheaper and hence accessible to more people with each generation. Storage capacity, the computer memory increased with every generation. Heat generated. Heat generated by the machines became lesser. They consumed lesser electricity with each generation. Accuracy. With each generation, computers became more and more error-free. Each new generation of modern computers resulted in the following changes. Features of the first generation of computers, 1940 to 1956. Use of vacuum tubes. Punched cards was used to store data. High consumption of electricity. Programming in machine language. Very large in size. Needed air conditioning to keep the machine cool. Inventor. Sir John Ambrose Fleming, FRS, was an English electrical engineer and physicist. He is known for inventing the first thermionic valve and vacuum tube. Features of the second generation of computers, 1956 to 63. Transistors were used faster than the first generation computers. Programming in machine language and assembly language. Magnetic tapes and disks were used to store data. Computers became smaller in size than the first generation computers. Computers produced lesser heat and consumed lesser electricity. Inventor The transistor was invented by William Shockley, John Bardeen and Walter Bratin in 1947. Features of the third generation of computers, 1964-71 to 71. Used integrated circuits or ICs. Power consumption was very low. Programming in high-level languages. Features of the fourth generation of computers, 1971 till present. Fourth generation computers are microprocessor-based systems. Development of portable computers used in virtual reality, multimedia, simulation. Different types of memories with very high accessing speed and storage capacity. Features of the fifth generation of computers, present and beyond. Fifth generation computers are future generation computers. Fifth generation computers will use super large scale integrated chips. They will have artificial intelligence. They will be able to recognize images and graphs. They will be able to use multiple CPUs for faster processing. Fifth generation computers are intended to work with natural languages. Which one is correct? 